Joel MD here, also known as Dr. Bones of the survival medicine website doomandbloom.net, where you'll find over 1,200 articles, podcasts, and videos on medical preparedness. I'm also the co author of the brand new and greatly expanded fourth edition of the Survival Medicine Handbook, available at Amazon and at store.doomandbloom.net. Bleeding from facial, neck, and head injuries is commonplace on the field of battle as well as in peacetime. It's only logical to expect that the survival medic might also be confronted with such wounds off the grid. Although direct pressure works to stop bleeding in some, it's not enough in others. Many hemorrhages are in candidates for obvious reasons. For a tourniquet placement, let's face it, it's not a good idea to wrap and tighten a tourniquet around somebody's neck, for example. A new device known as the IT clamp has recently entered the arena as an option for these specialized cases. The Committee on Tactical Combat Casualty Care endorsed this product in mid-2019 for the control of bleeding in certain situations where there are limited resources, so the survival medic should definitely know more about it. I guess I should define what a laceration is, which is basically what you're trying to treat with this. Lacerations are wounds that penetrate both the upper layer, the epidermal layer, and the lower layer, the dermal layer of the skin. This trauma often disrupts blood vessels and causes severe bleeding. Emergency rooms in the U.S. see millions of these injuries every year. Locations include the upper extremities in 35% of the cases, the face in 28%, torso in 14.5%, lower extremities 12.5, head and neck in 10. From these figures, you can see that about 38% of lacerations involve the head, face, and neck. With direct pressure less than reliable and tourniquets not an option, the IT clamp has emerged as an alternative. In one of the largest studies so far, 115 head and neck wound victims were treated with the device, the IT clamp device. 87% achieved bleeding control, also known as hemostasis, regardless of wound size and shape. It appears that the IT clamp functions as an effective mechanical bleeding control method when compared to direct pressure. Further, the device is simple to apply and is adjustable. Now how, the question is, does the IT clamp actually work? It's a self-locking clamp that quickly closes the skin with needles to create a temporary collection of blood called a hematoma underneath. These needles that are on the IT clamp penetrate and evert the skin edges in a manner that evenly distributes pressure across the length of the device. To use the IT clamp, open the sterile package and remove the device from the package by lifting straight up. The device will remind you of, well, a hair clip. Looks a lot like it. Locate the wound edges, let's say as you can see in our injury here, and align the spread open device parallel to the length of the wound edge and then press the clamp shut for a fluid tight seal, like so. Adjustment is done by pressing the red release button. This releases pressure and allows replacement, stopping bleeding temporarily until definitive therapy can be instituted. Studies have determined that the IT clamp can be applied in 10 seconds or less. It works reliably without additional pressure in situations where tourniquet placement is problematic. Success rates are very high in controlling bleeding on the first try. An improper placement can be easily identified by noting blood leaking from the wound edges. Even if not successful, the item can be readjusted quickly. Placement of the IT clamp is a temporary solution, of course. Like a tourniquet, it must be removed and the bleeding stopped by other means, if still active. Other limitations exist as well. IT clamps are not for use in non-compressible areas like the chest or abdominal cavities. It's also inappropriate to use near delicate structures like the eye. The device is too small to apply to amputated limbs or large avulsions like some shrapnel wounds. Any laceration longer than, say, your thumb would require multiple IT clamps. In large wounds, packing first with hemostatic gauze like Kytosam, Quick Clot, or Silox, and then closing the skin with the IT clamp could be a reasonable emergency strategy. The shelf life of this sterile device is about six years. The survival medic will likely deal with multiple bleeding injuries in the line of duty, so having a good supply of IT clamps would be useful. It isn't cheap, but it has the potential to become another effective tool in the survival medic's woodshed. Consider it for your survival medical storage. 
This is Joel MD, that old Dr. Bones, wishing you the best of health in good times or bad. Thanks for watching. Hey, are you medically prepared for the uncertain future? Find out what you need to know in a long-term disaster with a copy of the brand new, greatly expanded fourth edition of the Survival Medicine Handbook, available at Amazon and at store.doomandbloom.net. You'll be glad you did.